I coach at Cardiff Met Archers um, in Cardiff. I coach the under 18 girls and also our Division 1 women. I started coaching at a really young age, I feel like. I think, was it coaching or was it me being a bossy uh, younger sister? I'm not sure. Um, but ever since primary school, I've had a passion and loved like helping and teaching other people. So I can think back to primary school when I was playing netball and, and I used to want to help coach the younger ones. And then moving through at secondary school and I always had a younger brother. So um, yeah, since a really young age, really. Um, I'd say my PE teachers initially because they're the ones that kind of inspired me to want to teach. Initially, I always wanted to be a, a PE teacher um, and also got me into the sport of basketball. So they're probably my um, two of my biggest um, influences. But then Damien Jennings, for sure. I spent a lot of time with Damien when I came to do my undergrad from 2004 to 2012. And, and he was a real big inspiration for me. I think I've just always enjoyed it and um, you know as a player I think I always would try to help other people and um, and I found myself playing but also coaching at the same time which is is frustrating and I know it used to frustrate Damien because I'd, I'd phase out of plays because I'm trying to teach somebody else something and and I think it just naturally evolved as our women's program got bigger um, I just enjoyed working with other people and it was kind of a natural progression for me to to work with the second team and, and coach there. Oh, I feel like I'm challenged often. Um, I think it's it's difficult when you're working um, and you've got a full-time job as well as coaching. I think that's a challenge in itself because um, coaching requires so much um, input, energy, um, and often we don't have enough time for that. So there's so much more I'd want to do with the players, but you know, we only see them a couple of times a week or facility issues. So we can't get in the gym as often as we'd like to. Um, but I think I'm challenged, you know, daily with, with the team as well and, and managing different individual kind of personalities and trying to each year get a group of people who can be very different to kind of work together. I think I've not really answered one challenge there, but I think coaching in itself is challenging. Yeah, I think the key for me is, is initially, you know, the one-to-one -one relationship that I have with each individual I work with. Um, so I'm a firm believer in, you know, building those relationships and I'm not just there as their basketball coach. I'm there to help and support them at whatever stage they are in their journey, whether that be from a sporting perspective or academically or just personal life. So I think for me, building individual relationships is key. Then the players trust you um, and it just helps build that environment where they feel safe, um, where they feel comfortable um, and they know that there's someone there that cares and, and is there for them. So I think that really helps and then helps the team work together. So in the past, I've had um, a lot of students and a lot of under 18s, but getting them all to kind of um, to mix up who they're working with, to work with different people, to get to know each other off the court as well. I think those are key um, solutions. I find that hard because um, from a coaching perspective, I always feel as I'm still quite, quite young, quite early on in my career. Um, there's plenty from a playing perspective that I can think of. Um, but from a coaching perspective, I love seeing players when they've left um, Cardiff Met, when they've moved on to go and do their own thing. So players that go on to other clubs and start up their own teams or um, players that are still playing because it's unheard of a lot. You know, a lot of females stop too early, in my opinion. So I love seeing other players and alumni that are still um, flying the flag for basketball. I think more recently, um, this year in particular, you know, I was so proud of, you know, some of our under 18s who is a challenging year for everybody. Um, but one player in particular kind of made a big jump to, to move away from her school and come um, come to the college and, and do something different. And I received like a message from her teacher at college to say how amazing she's doing and how much she's developed in a short space of time. And I think I love that side of things that this player has just developed in her confidence so much because of the sport, but is also doing an amazing job academically. And that for me is like amazing. So. I think my ability to be able to connect with people, I think that is 
is my my key strength. I think I can empathise quite well and put myself in in the position of, of others um, because of my experiences and kind of where I grew up and and my journey. I think being able to understand the individual is something that I'd say is a key strength. I think it's amazing. I think it's obviously one of the first things um, of its kind that's been that's been ro rolled out by Basketball England and to connect with UK coaching is really um, valuable for, for females. And I think the group of females that we've got together are, are amazing. And I think that's why it's special is that there's a group that really want to um, to make a difference um, and want to kind of develop the sport further, but also show that there are more females in the game because the stats for females in the country just really aren't great. We don't really have many female coaches, but also not just coaches, but females in leadership positions. And I think this um, course is a real platform for that. Um, I've loved being able to, you know, sit on workshops and listen to other people in, in um, high positions, not necessarily from the world of sport, but I think that's been really valuable for us. But as, as a group, I think it's given us um, an opportunity just to collaborate, to work together. What I love the most is the prospect of where we're going to go. This isn't just going to be a 12 month program and that's it. I think it's going to be a 12 month program and there's going to be some real good actions on the back of it. And the thoughts of us leading a, a coaching clinic for females or something, we're just going to, you know, I think it's going to be really good. reach out to people. I think I'm so lucky that it's always been part of, of me to ask for help. Um, I've had some really strong people around me who I've never been afraid to go to if I need support or need help. Having a mentor is, is huge. I think you really need a mentor, but also um, asking questions. So I've been in a lot of environments where I've observed other people, um, but I've always been inquisitive. So I wanted to know why something's happening or when you might do something, you know, not just accepted something, but been um, someone who challenges and, and asks questions. I know it can be annoying sometimes, but I think that's a real key key thing for me. But um, but yeah, building a network of people that you trust and that will be there to support you, I think is really key. Um, for, for, for guys and girls, I think for women in particular, a key thing for me personally is about confidence. I think females do tend to lack a lot more confidence than, than men. Um, and I think that's something that I've experienced quite a lot. So I could be in an environment where on the outside I look really confident, but inside I'm, I'm not. And I think I've needed people along the way to kind of help me kind of build that confidence. I always think zone offense is tough to teach because I think it's tough for people to understand. It's so simple when you break it down and do it slowly, but game time, it's hard. But I'd actually say shooting. Um, I think I find it challenging, especially when players kind of adapt or adopt, sorry, um, certain tweaks to their shot or, you know, it's just not orthodox or I think it's really tough um, and challenging sometimes to teach shooting. Ooh. This is tough because there's so many books that always get recommended and I always get overloaded when people are saying, oh, try this book. I don't read enough and don't have enough time it feels like to read. Um, but Damien once bought me a book quite early on in my coaching career and it was a John Wooden book and it was the, the Lifetime of Observations and Reflections. And I, that, that book was really good. I think it was one of the first kind of coaching and, and basketball specific books that I read. So I'd recommend that. In 2012 Olympics, I think um, the GB women are just amazing. And uh, we were playing France. I was working as a kind of team manager, assistant team manager at the time, playing France in our pool game. And um, Celine de Merck hit a three to take it to overtime, which was heartbreaking. And then she hit a three to win the game. Um, and they went on to go up against the USA in the final. So yeah, I think that game will always stay with me. That was pretty amazing. I mean, we we're on the wrong side of the win-loss, but, you know, <laughs> the girls are so close. I always want to be remembered as someone who's passionate and someone who really cared. So I think that is quite an easy one for me. As long as people can look back and think, oh, Sarah, you know, she really loved the sport and she cared about people, I think oh, I'll be happy. Oh. I'd say no whistle, and I wouldn't do this now, obviously, a current situation, but I can whistle with my fingers, so I'd say no whistle, and if I needed to, I, I could, but no whistle. <laughs> <laughs>